Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. We're great, great, grateful to have you here. Um, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk through the agenda. So first topic, as usual, open action items. We then had a, a topic to hear an update from Natasha on the plugin installation manager tool. We've got the option to hear from Alex Earl on the Windows installer if he's available, release drafter progress from Oleg, and then JDK tool next steps. Uh, any other agenda topics that need to be added to the agenda before we actually start working on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's look at action items. Yes, I still have the open the JEP topic no, I haven't done it, and I probably won't do it before Jenkins World. Time is quite crunched right now. Um, Oleg, you've still got the action item for Windows support policy? Yeah, it's still there. Okay. And Alex reported this morning on his action item that there is some block still in terms of code signing infrastructure. I know that Olivier Vermin was offline for a period. So I assume that that, is, that remains open. And then we had the community bridge project. Oleg, anything you wanted to report there? I've seen some activity there recently. Yeah, there are some updates by Tracer. So basically we started a uh, funding uh, project uh, for community bridge. Basically it means uh, we got uh, the tooling enabled to, uh, to make it happen. Um, and currently we explore options whether we can uh, fund uh, it with, from Jenkins budget. I mean, technically, if it happens, so then yeah, uh, basically we can use existing Jenkins budget to fund community bridge projects, same as we do for outreach, for example. Ah, okay. So, so the same pattern as the outreachy project. Uh, yeah, right. I'll uh, add the link once I find uh, the Google Doc. Um, yeah, so right now nothing is 100% clear, but yeah, it looks like that we will finally get it running, at least in the evaluation mode for this year. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you, thanks very much. So yeah, basically, whatever who wants to propose the projects uh, and who doesn't want to wait for JSOC, you can uh, reach out to the Jenkins developer mailing list and propose them there. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, we will go in, uh, public maybe in one month or so around the Jenkins world. So. It basically depends on when we get final confirmations from um, Linux Foundation and CDF. Got it. So, and so the, the crucial thing there that, that I had missed in the earlier description was the funding page begins the process of allowing organizations and individuals to contribute funds towards a community bridge project. A project that's not funded certainly won't happen. Is That's the kind of idea that that is? Yeah, that's the idea. Okay. So basically, we can run projects which are not funded. I mean, uh, there is uh, no problem to do a project similar to how Mozilla Foundation does it. So Mozilla Foundation doesn't uh, pay any kind of stipend uh, to students because basically they provide mentorship time, they provide expertise, and uh, yeah, for many students, it's not. So ah. for having uh, projects, it's generally not a blocker. Uh, community bridge, yeah, it can be used for for funded projects because yeah, in such case we can use uh, Linux Foundation, uh, legal entities, etc., to make it happen. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and so Natasha, I gather that you just responded to slide on his question about the uh, about the Zoom Zoom link. Yeah, I think he was asking if it was the same as last week or something, but I'm not sure. But I mean, the link that you posted worked for me, so Excellent. hopefully it should work for him too. Thank you. Thanks. So I think that covers all of our current action items. Um, 
Natasha, we're ready to talk about Plugin Installation Manager tool. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll just give you guys like a quick update of the things I've been working on. So um, probably since the last time we talked, um, some of like the update centers were hard coded. So since then, I've added support to get those from environment variables or from CLI options. Um, I've also added support for um, like defaults for Windows instead of just uh, like Unix or Linux platforms. Um, and then I've kind of been working through some issues with um, the dependency resolution. So previously all of that was done by grabbing information from the manifest, but um, I know Oleg had mentioned that it would be nice to be able to get some of that from the update center data. Um, the problem is it's just not all necessarily located in one place. So I think that's mostly fixed now, but that was kind of um, an ongoing issue uh, like the last week or so. Um, and then just other things that are kind of in the works right now. Um, so I started adding support for YAML formats and then also um, support for like additional functionality. So being able to see like what would be installed before it's actually installed. Um, but a lot of that was kind of put on hold when um, just until we kind of I kind of figured out some of the dependency resolution and stuff. So I'll be kind of picking that back up. Um, so yeah, that's uh, basically where I'm at right now. Thanks. Any questions from the group? That that's, sounds like wonderful progress. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any questions. I don't know. I'm going to see what issues Alex was uh, running into or the, the latest issues that he was running into. Yeah, my next steps are hopefully once I get everything working a little bit better, um, will be to submit like a PR to actually include it in Docker. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be working through hopefully this last issue um, before that happens. Oh, and that's in the place you're considering is in the Jenkins Docker image so that it yeah. would, you would replace install dash plugins dot sh yeah, there correct. or supersede. Okay. Install dash plugins dot sh. Nice. Very nice. So since Alex is not, not with us yet, I propose we defer this one for the moment. I'm going to drop it below in case he's able to join us. Uh, Oleg, did you want to take on the next topic, relief, <coughs> release oh, yeah. rafter um, progress? Yeah, that's quick. Um, so basically, um, I presented uh, the state uh, two weeks ago since that uh, nothing really changed except adoption. So we are up to 41 repositories by this time. So yeah, it's still uh, less than 2% of uh, Jenkins repositories overall, but uh, yeah, we got some adoptions like uh, Kubernetes plugin, etc. So basically this story gets adopted and I haven't uh, even uh, published a blog post for that yet. So yeah, I think we are getting good progress. Um, everything is in place. Um, I also integrated the change uh, to Jenkins core. So we will have um, 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 the uh, uh, release drafter for Jenkins Core, which would be drafting initial YAML formats. Um, it will be available only for Jenkins Core team members, at least for now. Uh, unfortunately, GitHub doesn't have uh, permissions which would allow to make it public. Uh, otherwise, we would could have said that hey, there is a, a draft change log for the incoming release. Uh, but yeah, still, we get something. Yeah, and so so could you remind me on Jenkins core it's actually not writing it's writing something different than it's writing elsewhere I think there it's using a yellow I, yeah I can show what it writes just a second uh, yeah really good. Um, yeah I'm just sorry I'm just lost in Google Doc um, yeah you can open uh, the pull request I referenced Uh, basically, it generates YAML uh, draft. So it's not a text format, it's a format we use uh, for 
um, uh, weekly YAML on the Jenkins IO website. I'm not sure. So for for users, maybe a markdown format like we use for other repositories is helpful. But here we just get initial generation, and they, it's still uh, not something we can use for automation flows because, for example, time type is not defined, and we need the generation of links if there is more than one. But at least we we got something. Right, because today this is. This is being generated interactively by Daniel Beck or you each week, right? And each time we do an LTS. So this at least could reduce the effort for the, give you a starting point instead of that interactive work. Yeah, that's the idea. Thank you. Thanks very much. That is so encouraging. Great. Thank you. All right. Next topic. Or ready to go on to next topic, Oleg, the JDK tool? Yep, mm, so basically um, it's a quick update and we already had discussions for GDK to platform set meetings when we were working on Java 11. Uh, so um, yeah, GDK tool, um, basically in Jenkins, uh, there are two um, abstraction layers. One is tool installation, which defines uh, how the tool uh, is used. For example, uh, Mark uh, has a, a Git tool installation, uh, Git client plugin. But the tool installation doesn't define how the tool is installed. For installation, there is another extension point uh, called uh, tool installer. And historically, this extension point uh, used to be confused a lot. And yeah, if you take a look at GDK tool, uh, some people think that it's actually a tool installation, but it's not. It's only a tool installer, which actually does install GDK from Oracle website. So basically it installs uh, Oracle SC development kit. So it's not even uh, open GDK. And taking uh, the recent uh, changes in licensing, obviously, um, well, it's less than optimal. Because, uh, yeah, whomever wants to, be, to use the GDK 11, uh, they would need uh, to accept a new Oracle license. And uh, yeah, our problem that currently when you use a GDK tool plugin, you explicitly accept the license. And uh, then, uh, yeah, if you accept the license, it just stays accepted. Unfortunately, Oracle website doesn't require you to reaccept this license because that's how the plugin works. So it's a problem. And basically now the plugin is uh, stuck, uh, stuck with Java 8. And even with Java 8, uh, there is a lot of confusion because it's called GDK tool plugin. It's, it's installed on uh, almost every Jenkins instance. Uh, well, yeah, 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 what I tell is listed in the developer uh, list uh, thread, which is linked above. So yeah, if you want to go to uh, get more context. Uh, so. I started this thread in order to discuss what we actually want to do with uh, this plugin. And my proposal is uh, firstly to rename the plugin to make uh, the naming explicit. So it won't be GDK tool, it will be Oracle GDK installer. It will be still uh, installed on almost every Jenkins instance because in order to prevent that we need uh, to fix the detached dependencies. But we can document uh, what the plugin actually means. And uh, we can add uh, administrative warnings for tool installer and other things. And later, when uh, plugins move to new Jenkins for baselines, we can slowly deprecate it. So basically, that's my proposal. I uh, have a couple of versions uh, with documentation. And uh, as option for discussion, um, if you want to support uh, Java 11 uh, in this plugin, again, Oracle uh, SC GDK 11, in such case, uh, we can uh, create a new major release, uh, JDK tool 2.0, which would be a breaking change because we will request people to explicitly accept the license. Uh, but yeah, it can enable this plugin for someone who really wants to use it. Mm -hmm. So, and accepting the new license terms means that they are saying they have a, they have complied with Oracle's commercial terms. And then, exactly. Okay, great. Well, basically, what I want to say that uh, as long as it's not a Jenkins project's problem, uh, we are fine with it. If a customer has an Oracle license for OpenGDK or for Java C, okay, they can use it. So we don't want to remove this plugin entirely. But yeah, the problem that uh, this plugin is a part of Jenkins core. 
Uh, before that, we had some discussions, uh, maybe two or three uh, months ago, there was a contributor who actually proposed a change uh, to uh, tra Traveler. Traveler is an infrastructure part which pulls um, uh, release versions for such tools on the infrastructure. And uh, yeah, basically, he, after the discussion, he created Adopt Open GDK plugin, which does exactly like a GDK plugin, but for Adopt Open GDK. And there are also numerous other ways uh, to use Java. Uh, basically, in the Jenkins community, we recommend neither GDK tool nor adopt uh, open GDK tool because you would rather install Java in Docker or you pre-install it on your infrastructure because if you download a tool from external site, it can always go wrong, independent of what you do. Pretty much the same for Maven tool, pretty much the same for Git tool if you download it from external location. Uh, it's better not to do that. Right. Okay. And, and that that now I think I'm starting to understand your your clarification earlier that there's the notion of a tool installation abstraction layer and a tool ex installer extension point. Right. So I don't have to. I don't have to use mm -hmm. that specific installer. I can in fact install from a zip file hosted on my on my own local network, on my Jenkins file, on my Jenkins environment, or somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. So GDK tool, yeah, it offers one installer, which used to install from some uh, Java clone. Uh, now it installs from Oracle. But uh, you can use core features, and GDK tool installation is a part of Jenkins core at the moment. Uh, and uh, there uh, is a lot of plugins. For example, there is custom tools plugin, extra tool installers, etc., which offer even more tool installers, which can be used. Well, custom tool plugin probably not the best example for that, but yeah, extra tool installers does the job. For example, if you want to um, install plugins from RAR or TAR instead of Zip, apparently it's in a separate plugin. But yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the group to Oleg with regard to JDK tool? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Oleg. Thanks very much. And I see that Alex has joined. Alex, mm -hmm. we had a topic for Windows installer status. Is there anything you'd like to share with us? Having having difficulty hearing you, Alex. Is that better? Yes, that is. It is. Okay. Um, I was just apologizing for being late. For some reason, the Gitter or the Zoom link didn't come through on Gitter for me. So, um, the only update I have is um, I don't know if anybody knows of contacts at CDF for um, either giving information about like requesting code signing certificates, because um, that's kind of what's holding us up at this point. The, the build is working on trusted CI for the installer. Um, so it's really just the code signing that um, would need to be in place in order to do an actual release with the new installer. Yeah, uh, so basically what Mark uh, said, Tracy Miranda is uh, the best contact. Uh, probably she knows uh, the status of Olivier's work because uh, yeah, the release automation for Jenkins Core by Olivier also required uh, code signing. Um, and yeah, basically it was uh, the key problem to resolve in this uh, automation. So maybe they have uh, a decision how to resolve that. Yeah, as a plan B, of course, we can ask Kiki uh, to start releasing new tool installer and to put sign it locally, but yeah, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. It seems kind of fishy to uh, to have a manual process to release Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. And, and we've been working for a long time on trying to improve that one, so right. good. Anything else, Alex, or any questions from the group for Alex? Not for me. 
All right. That concludes the topics that were on our agenda. Anything else that needs to be covered? Mm, Jenkins World. Um, oh, oh, right, Jenkins World. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Do we have uh, any specific uh, plans for community booths with regards to platform seek? So I'll. So I will certainly be in the booth, and I'm. I've got a, a lightning talk that I'll be doing on faster Git. So we'll, we'll be there visit, present, but I'm not aware of anything specific. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Well, we could repeat supporting uh, Jenkins platform uh, topic. I mean, uh, we did it uh, in this uh, last year. Uh, I mean, we did it together with Mark. Basically, Mark, you could just repeat it if uh, there are slots in the community booth because, well, content today, it, uh, maybe needs uh, some update, but uh, we could, could do that. Uh, not supporting Java 11, supporting platforms. Ah, oh, right, right, got it. Yeah, basically, it was an overview of uh, activities in C. So it was uh, Java, Java support. Uh, it was uh, what else? Uh, well, installers, uh, Docker packaging, and other things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, are you going to be at Jenkins World this year? I. I, it was not approved by my management, so I will not be there. That's, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. I would, I would have liked that. It was a pleasure to see you last year there. It was fun to be there. I wish I could be there this year. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maybe could, you could go to Lisbon? I, I have to confess, a flight to Lisbon is cheaper still than a flight to, uh, a flight to Alaska. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's likely that I also miss uh, Jenkins' fault. That's uh, why I'm asking. Uh, but yeah, mm, if we have people coming to the booth, if you have other presenters who talk about uh, Jenkins platforms support, maybe we could facilitate some discussion or maybe even a blog post about that. Although I'm not sure what's in the agenda. Well, and I think, how about if we put the action item on me? I've got to talk to the Jenkins World organizers, to um, to mm -hmm. Alyssa and others. Let's put that on me, Oleg. I'll be there. And mm -hmm. if, the, if they don't already have finalized, I know that the GSOC participants have got plans for that, for the community booth. But let me see if they've got time in it. And if so, let's let's put that in. So let me put that as an action item for me. So basically, regarding uh, GSOC, yeah, we have a lightning talk confirmed. We will likely have a poster and other things. We will have uh, people present at the booth. And uh, hopefully, we will have a demo by Natasha there and maybe by other mentors who come to the conference. So still work in progress, but I think that uh, we can assemble a good agenda. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I think that uh, plugin manager uh, tool will be also in the agenda for lightning talk. So yeah, at least we get additional uh, topic. Uh, sorry, I missed that. What was that additional topic? Uh, so lightning talk by Natasha. Oh, right, right, got it, right. So we, yeah, we need uh, to do some final confirmations, but I think it's everything is on track. Uh, Natasha, has uh, somebody already reached out to you? Um, so Krista and I also briefly talked about it yesterday, but nobody has really like officially confirmed anything or um, if there's any additional things besides like sending like the abstract and title of my talk, nobody else has like really reached out to me um, to get anything else besides that. Okay. So we will cut in with Kristen then. Yeah, sure. Do you want? I can talk to. I think Tracy was the one who was coordinating all that. So, or was it Alyssa? I'll I'll look. I'll I guess it's uh, Lisa and Skyler. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. I think that's it then. Anything else? 
nothing specific. So uh, next meeting will be just on August 1st, August 2nd, August 1st. So I will likely miss that. And after that, uh, there will be Jenkins World meeting, uh, which probably makes no sense. Right. We will we will cancel the week of Jenkins World. There's I'm not available, and I I suspect many other contributors are are not available. Well, I guess Alex, if you're not going to be there, and Oleg, if you're not going to be there, do the two of you want to do a platform sig meeting during the week of Jenkins World? Well, all of you all of you drink at Jenkins World, right? Okay. I my kids start school, so I I will not be able to attend at this time. Starting ah, okay, next which week, so. which lobbies? It's a good excuse for us to look for. Do we want to switch to an alternate time? Do we? That, that's great. So we'll take a break at, at Jenkins World and reconvene two weeks thereafter. Sounds good. Okay. Kind of is me. All right. Thanks, everybody. End of end of the meeting. Thanks very much. And I will turn off recording.